Hello everyone, how's it going? My name is Dan the Tutor. In today's video, we're going to be talking about angular kinematics. Angular kinematics, of course, is related to regular kinematics, except now we're going to be talking about rotational or circular motion. So let's go ahead and get into it. First, with the variables we need to know. Back in our kinematic days, we had V, of course, which stood for velocity. And now V is essentially going to become omega, which is angular velocity. And this just describes how fast something is spinning. So if there's a high omega angular velocity, the thing's spinning really fast. Think like a bicycle wheel or a car tire. Now, a lot of my students call this W. Do not call it W. This is Greek letter omega, lowercase. And so you will call it omega. Next, I do want to say there is an equation relating these two terms. V equals omega times R, the radius. You will not always be using this equation, but you will use it whenever you want to go back and forth between the translational world of physics, which simply means moving in one direction, and the circular world of physics, which is the omega stuff. The next thing I want to tell you, we also have a counterpart to acceleration. Acceleration is going to become alpha, which is the angular acceleration. An alpha, angular acceleration, describes how fast something is speeding up or slowing down when it's spinning. And once again, there is an equation relating acceleration and angular acceleration. And that equation is A equals alpha times R. Very similar to V equals omega times R. And then the last thing I want to tell you is that we used to have displacement in kinematics. I usually call displacement delta X or delta y, but now with angular displacement, once again we have a new variable, it's delta theta. And this is just describing how many times something is rotating. Sometimes they'll give you the units in rotations or revolutions, and we don't like those units. We like the units of radians for delta theta. We have to use radians. So in other words, if you are given, let's say, five revolutions or five rotations, and you want to convert to radians, then the conversion factor you're going to do is one revolution in the denominator and two pi radians in the numerator. That gets revolutions to cancel, and you'll get, in this example, 10 pi radians, which is what you'd be using for your calculations. And so that's a good introduction, then, to the variables you need to know for angular kinematics. Now let's look at the equations. So now on my screen, these are the equations we used to know for regular kinematics. And all of these equations are going to be replaced with these equations, which basically say the exact same thing, except now we're talking about angular kinematics. And just as a tip for you, what I would be doing to solve any of these angular kinematics problems, I would first write my five kinematic variables, omega initial, omega final, alpha, time, and delta theta, angular displacement. And just like back in the kinematics days, we need three of the five in order to solve. And so that's what we're going to be doing. So now let's look at some example problems. Let's say I have a wheel like this that has a radius of 50 centimeters. This wheel is going to be spinning from rest and for the first 10 seconds I'm going to tell you it has an angular acceleration of one radian per second squared. And then for the last 30 seconds, I'm going to tell you this wheel has constant speed. So here's everything you need to know. I'm going to ask three questions for this one. The first question I'm going to ask is, what is the angular velocity after 10 seconds? And if you think you know how to solve this, go ahead, give it a try. And if you have no idea, here's the solution. So first, I would write out my five kinematic variables, omega initial, omega final, alpha, time, and displacement. We know omega initials zero because we're starting from rest. Omega final is what we're solving for. We want that final angular speed. Alpha, they told us, is one for the first 10 seconds, so that's nice. The time is 10 seconds. Again, they told us that. And delta theta, I don't know, and I don't really care either because I already have three of the five, which means I can solve for whatever I want, and I choose omega final. I'm going to use the equation that does not have delta theta in it, that would be this one. And if you didn't know this, then you know, you'll know you get the hang of it after a while. Maybe you're allowed an equation sheet. 
But I would recommend that you study and memorize these because it's just so much easier than having to look back at an equation sheet. So then omega final is going to equal 0 plus 1 times 10. So it looks like omega final is just 10. And the units for angular velocity are the radian per second. And there's our answer for the first one. The second question I'm going to ask for this wheel, I want you to find how many rotations after 40 seconds. And you'll notice I do want rotations. So the equations that I'm going to use are going to give me the answer in radians. And the final step I'm going to have to do, I'm going to have to convert to rotations. So that's my hint to you. You can either try this on your own now, or you can wait a second and I'll tell you the solution. And I'm assuming you've decided by now. So here's how I'm going to solve it. First, I do need to realize that this problem is going to be split into two parts. The first 10 seconds, and then the last 30 seconds. And I'm going to be doing something different for each part. For the first 10 seconds, I can write out my kinematic variables. Omega initial, omega final alpha, time, and displacement. We know a lot of these numbers already. Actually, we know all of them because the only one that was missing was omega final, and we found that. So now we can find delta theta, no problem. Again, that will be in radians, but that's okay. We can convert to rotations later. And since I have all the variables, I can basically choose any equation I want. I think this one will be the easiest. Delta theta equals omega initial times time plus one half alpha t squared. So that's gonna be zero times 10 plus one half times one times 10 squared. Just plug this in a calculator and you'll get 50. And again, the units are radians. So if I wanna convert that to rotations, what I gotta do is I'll write 50 radians. And is it multiply or divide by two pi? Well, two pi radians in the denominator to cancel out the radians units one rotation in the numerator. It's gonna be 50 divided by two pi. I plug this in a calculator and I'll get 7.96 and that's rotations for the first 10 seconds. And then for the last 30 seconds, for the last 30 seconds, the problem said it had constant speed, constant angular speed, which means that alpha equals zero and I'm not using kinematics because I don't use kinematics when alpha zero then what do I use instead? Well, traditionally, you would have used this equation back in the beginning of motion days, V equals delta X over T. Now I'm just gonna replace the variables, omega equals delta theta over time. And we know all these variables except delta theta. Time is obviously 30, because it's 30 seconds. Delta theta I'm solving for, and maybe you don't know what omega is, but I'll tell you. Let me go back up to right here. So it started out at zero, after 10 seconds it's at 10, and we know for the last 30 seconds it's at constant speed. You just need to realize that that constant speed is the final after the 10 seconds. That's the constant speed for the last 30 seconds, 10 radians per second. So the 10 goes right here, solving for delta theta, multiply both sides by 30, and you'll get 300. Again, that's radians. If I want to convert to rotations, I just have to divide this answer by two pi radians and one rotation in the numerator, plugging that in a calculator, and I'll get 47.75. And again, that's rotations. So then if I want the total number of rotations, I'm just gonna add my answer from the last part, 7.96, plus the answer I just got, 47.75, Plug that in the calculator and I'll get 55.71 and that's how many rotations we'll be making after the 40 seconds are up. And now I still have one more question for this problem. The last question I want to know is, I want to know the tangential speed after 40 seconds on the rim of the wheel. So in other words, let me draw this wheel one more time. I just have to choose any point on the rim, like this point right here, and I want to find the speed, which is velocity, not angular velocity. I would have asked for angular velocity or angular speed. So I want V. Well, which equation would I use to find V? Of course, I'm going to use V equals omega times R. They gave us the radius. They said the radius was 50 centimeters. 
Now, of course, I'm not going to use centimeters. I'm going to convert that to meters. So divide by 100, 0.5 meters. Easy. And then omega, which value for omega am I going to use? Well, since the question asked after 40 seconds, that's the final speed, which is the same 10 radians per second we said earlier. Meaning, velocity is 10 times radius 0.5. Velocity equals 5, and the units are meters per second. And there we go. That's all we had to do for that one. Okay, so hopefully you had fun with those. I got one more question I want to look at today. For this last one, we have a Ferris wheel. And the Ferris wheel is going to be basically making one full revolution in a time of one minute. I will tell you that there is constant angular acceleration, but I am not going to tell you what that acceleration is. My question, ultimately, if this Ferris wheel has a radius of 20 meters, my question to you is, what is the tangential velocity v, not omega, v, at the top? And so I do want you to at least try this on your own first. Before you do attempt it, just one hint I want to give you. You are going to be using angular kinematics. You are going to be solving for omega final. And then you're going to use omega final to find v using a certain equation. So go ahead, try it, and unpause the video when you're ready to see the solution. Okay, and here we go. First things first, I'm going to write omega initial, omega final, alpha, time, and displacement. And I'm going to see what I know. It starts from rest. So omega initial equals zero. If the problem doesn't tell you, it's usually safe to assume that you're starting from rest. Omega final, like I said, is what I'm solving for. Alpha, we don't know. Time, I said one minute. And delta theta is one revolution, because I said one revolution in one minute. Now, one thing I want to warn you, if you try and solve for omega final right here, you're going to get the wrong answer. Why? Because this is omega final after one minute, after one revolution. In other words, back to my picture, you would be finding the velocity down here after it completed one full rotation, which is not what we want. But the reason why I'm doing this spot anyway is because I can solve for alpha. And once I find alpha, then I can ultimately find omega final. So I want to use the equation that does not have omega final in it. I have the other three variables. I should warn you, you do have to convert both of these. Like we can't use one minute, we have to convert that to seconds. That's easy because it's just 60 seconds in one minute. But if the number was any harder than one minute, what you would have done is one minute times one minute in the denominator, 60 seconds in the numerator, and the minutes cancels, leaving you with 60. And then for one revolution, same idea, multiply by the conversion factor, one revolution in the denominator with two pi radians in the numerator. Revolutions cancel, and you get two pi radians. And now we have everything we need to plug in the equation. The equation will be delta theta equals omega initial times time plus one half alpha t squared. Delta theta is two pi, omega initial zero, time doesn't matter because anything times zero is still zero, plus one half alpha time is 60, and that's squared. And now I just gotta solve for alpha. So 60 squared is 3600, divided by two is 1800. In other words, two pi equals 1800 alpha, and they just have to divide both sides by 1800. And we'll get alpha equals 0 0.00349, and the units are radians per second squared. And then once I have alpha, I am not going to solve for omega final yet. I'm going to do these variables again. Omega initial, omega final, alpha, time, and displacement, but this time for the top of the Ferris wheel. In other words, if I have my Ferris wheel again right here, here is the initial at the bottom, and here is the final at the top. A minute ago, when we did the kinematic equations, we put the initial and the final at the bottom when it did one full rotation. So in other words, omega initial is still zero. Omega final is what I'm solving for this time. Alpha did not change because it's constant, 0 0.00349. The time, we don't know. Do not cut it in half and say it's 30 seconds 
And the reason why is it's not 30 seconds to go up and then 30 seconds to come back down. The Ferris wheel is gonna be fastest towards the end and slower at the beginning. And we know that because just like anything that moves, it takes a while to speed up. And over time it gets faster and faster and faster. So it's not an even split 30 seconds, 30 seconds. So we don't know time, but delta theta is one half rotation. And that's because if I highlight in red where I'm going, the angular displacement is half a rotation, one half of the circle. And half a rotation, convert that to radians by doing one rotation in the denominator, two pi radians in the numerator, rotations cancel, and you'll just get pi radians. And once again, I have three of the five, which means I can solve for whatever I want. I choose to solve for omega final now, and I'm gonna be using the equation that does not have time in it. That would be this equation. Omega final squared equals omega initial squared plus two alpha delta theta. So omega final squared equals zero plus two times 0 0.00349 times pi. Simplifying the right side in a calculator, I'll get omega final squared equals 0 0.0219. And if I want to solve for omega final, take the square root. And if you do that correctly, you'll get omega final equals 0.148. And the units are radians per second. Now, of course, I didn't want omega final. I wanted the tangential velocity, which is going to be the equation V equals omega times R. Omega, we just found 0.148. And the radius we said was 20 meters. That was at the very beginning of the problem. So just multiply that answer by 20. We'll get a velocity of 2.96 meters per second, which is pretty slow, which is good for this Ferris wheel ride. And that's it. That's my answer. So if you have any questions with that, please post them in the comments below. And now I want you to have a great rest of your day, and I'll see you in the next video. Take care, and bye-bye.